If you're actually sitting in my classroom right now, we need to check something before we move forward. For whatever reason, I was noticing on some students' computers that the uh, bushes and the trees, uh, if you go to the terrain assets and you click on one of these folders, like the trees folder, these trees should look like they look on my screen. They should have color to them. They should look like trees. If for some reason yours don't, I don't think they transferred properly, um, so we're going to need to fix that. But we have to be kind of careful with how we proceed. So if your trees don't look like this, and if so, it's probably also your grass, bushes, and rocks as well. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to delete these folders. The important thing, the very important thing, is that you don't delete the textures folder. We have been using these textures all over your, your land here. If you delete this folder, you're going to lose all of the color um, on your screen and you're going to cause some problems uh, for Unity. So delete everything else other than the textures folder. And then we're going to go to the asset store to get the actual terrain package. So we're going to go to window, asset store. Now remember, we could search for it right here in the search bar, we could just search for terrain assets, but the quickest way usually is to go to the right hand part of the screen, scroll down. Um, there's a top paid category, which is the top apps that people pay for, but there's also a top free one. You click on that and it's number two, usually. So click there, go ahead and import these. It's going to ask you here what you want to import, and what we're going to do is we are going to come down here and we're going to uncheck the textures box. We do not need, oh, actually, you know what? That was the wrong textures box to, uh, to uncheck. What we need to do, I'm going to minimize these. So I have bushes, Actually, that should work just fine, actually. I'm going to go ahead and press import. It's going to bring it into the scene. And here we go. You're going to see a little error message down here. And basically, Unity was just kind of confused because it already had a terrain assets folder, um, which we were using. But now we tried to import another one, and it just gets a little confused. If you go to the console here, which shows you all of your errors, you can press clear um, and that error will be gone. Now your trees should look like mine, they should have color and same thing with the bushes and the grass. Here we are back in our scene and it's looking pretty good so far but it's kind of empty. When we hop into the world it's just sort of barren and kind of lifeless so let's add some life to it. So the first thing we're going to do is add some grass and if we click on our terrain over here in the hierarchy to get back to our terrain tools. We haven't really messed with these over here on the right yet. We're going to use both the place trees and the paint details button. Right now we're going to choose paint details. And just like a texture, we're going to edit details. And we can choose between either adding a grass texture or adding a detail mesh. For now, we're going to choose grass texture, which brings up this box. Now, in the terrain assets, which we've already used, we have several folders, and one of them is grass. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab the this one called grass. I could use any of these. Drag it up here into detail texture. And I have a couple of things going on. Um, one thing you'll notice is that there's a healthy color and a dry color because Unity will sort of randomize uh, the grass so that some of it's healthy, some of it's dry, some of it's in between. So you can change the colors if you want it to be all green. You could make it so there's less variation between those and I press add. So now just like in my textures I have one grass texture. I could go ahead if I wanted to and add a second like these white flowers and press add. But I'll start with this grass texture and I'll zoom into an area. Actually what I'll do is I'll click on my first person controller. I'll bring my mouse over here into the view window and I'll press F. And that zooms in on my first person controller. That way when I start to place my grass, I'll be able to see what it looks like right away. So I'll choose terrain again, click on grass, and it works like everything else does. I have brushes. So you see the size of my brush, and you have opacity and target strength. So if I go ahead and I drop some grass in there, it 
you'll see now I have some grass. You'll also notice that it sort of waves in the wind a little bit. I could choose to add some white flowers here for some variation. But you'll notice that the white flowers aren't very white. That's because we still have it set here so that the healthy color is green and the dry color is brown. I would need to make it a little bit whiter, obviously, to have the flowers be white. And now I get closer to the what I would think of as the intention of what that's supposed to look like. So I can go ahead and fill up my, my world where it makes sense with grass textures. Next, let's go ahead and add some trees. So I'm going to click on my terrain here in the hierarchy, and we're going to choose the Place Trees button. And just like textures, just like grass, we're going to choose Edit Trees. We're going to add a tree. Brings up this box, and if we go here to the Trees folder, we have several trees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one. I'm going to drag it up here into the tree prefab slot and press add. Now just like before I have brush size, I have tree density, that's how many trees will be fit inside of my area. And I have tree height, this is pretty important, so let's just give some examples. I'm going to turn the uh, brush size down and the density down a little bit and I'm going to click. And with that level of density I only got one tree inside of my my brush. If I turn the tree density way up, come over here, I got several more. If I hop into my world, you can say those trees are probably pretty well sized. They make sense given how tall I am in the scene. Um, they might be a little tall actually, so I'm going to go ahead and press Control Z to undo those trees. And now I can set the tree height here. So just as an example, let's go all the way down. And you'll see I get tiny little trees, wee little trees. But I can also, the tree height also has a slider. So I could say from here to here, and what's going to happen is that it's going to randomize it so that the tree height can be anywhere from here to here. That's actually a very, very broad range. I'm going to end up getting really small ones and very big ones. So that's probably too big of a range for me. Probably what I'm going for is something along the lines of this, where there is some variation in the trees, so they don't all look the exact same. There's some, otherwise it just looks kind of sort of carbon copied and fake. Uh, but there's not so much range that it doesn't make any sense. It also does random tree rotation, which is nice. So it will actually randomly rotate the trees. So if you have several next to each other, they also don't look the exact same. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these trees for now so it's easier to see. And I'm going to add another tree. I'm going to add the palm tree. I think the palm tree is the one I'm thinking of. The palm tree can give us some issues. I'm going to show you what to do um, if this arises. I'm going to go ahead and click. Oops. See what I did there is I didn't click over here to choose the palm tree. I was still on the elder tree. And I'm going to come over here and I just clicked. Oh, and there they go. Do you see them? They're not even big enough right now to show up as trees. They just show up as little dots um, so I know where they are. For whatever reason, some of the trees that are pre-built in the terrain assets, including the palm tree, start off really, really small. Um, so I'm going to double click on the palm tree down here. And that brings up all of its properties. And I'm going to change the scale factor from 0.01. That's saying that it's basically point, it's just saying it's really small. And I'm going to try 0.1 instead. So that's going to be about 10 times bigger. So now I'm going to come back to my scene. Okay, and you'll see that they're definitely bigger, but they're definitely way too small. So let's open up the prefab again down here. And let's just give them a scale factor of 1. We'll come back to our scene. I'm going to press apply. And now I'm going to get palm trees that I think are probably along uh, the right lines. They might be a little bit too tall, but I can adjust that using my tree height over here. But before, when they were 0 0.01, their normal size, 
uh, they were definitely too small to be seen. And I'm not sure why they haven't fixed that yet. That's been a, a sort of an issue for a, for a long time with Unity. So we mentioned trees and grass, but when we were setting the grass down in the paint details, we also had another option. We had add detail mesh. Um, and there's not a lot of difference here. You would probably use that if you wanted to add some bushes or some rocks, and it works in the exact same way. Um, the difficulty is with things like rocks is it's going to come out in that same sort of green yellow color unless you explicitly change it to sort of a more gray rocky looking color. Um, and there's another problem. So I'll go ahead and I'll add a detail mesh. I'll throw the rock in there. I'm going to leave this the same just to, uh, to make the point. If I'm adding things like rocks and bushes, I should switch this to what's called vertex lit and I'll press add. So now I'm going to drop some, um, some rocks on the scene. Notice that my opacity and my target strength are way down already, but still when I, oops, I need to switch over to, to rock mesh. There's still a lot of rocks on the scene. And as I said, they're, they're green because they're considered healthy because um, I didn't change those colors. Um, and one of the issues here is that I just walk right through these rocks, which sort of destroys the illusion in my mind. So I'm going to click out of game mode. I'm going to press Control Z a couple of times to lose those rocks. Um, the other way that I can add things into my scene, any prefab, really, so that goes for rocks, um, trees, bushes, is I can take the rock from here and I can drag it directly onto my scene and place it where I want it. You'll notice that it actually has a gray color now because I'm actually taking the model itself. I'm not using the terrain tools, which sort of recolor the thing. Um, to that green or yellow color. So now when I drop in this scene, it's there, it looks nice, but I can still walk right through. Um, and that's kind of a problem for me. It really just sort of annoy me. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my, my prefab here. And there's a checkbox that we have to check, and that's generate colliders. Now a collider is exactly what it sounds like. If something has a collider, it is capable of colliding with something else. If it doesn't have a collider, it is literally not capable of making a collision, and therefore it's basically not there. It's like a picture of a rock, but it's not actually a rock. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to press apply, and let's see if this rock gets that collider. There it goes. I'm trying to walk forward, but I can't because the rock now has a collider on it. Um, and for my money, that actually helps a lot with the... Uh, so. Unfortunately, it's the same thing with trees. If I use the terrain tools to place the trees, the place trees here, they're actually going to end up being, I can sort of walk through them the same way. If I pull them out individually and place them wherever I want them, and I make sure that that's the bamboo tree, once again, I make sure that generate colliders is turned on, I press apply. At this point, if all goes well, I should not be able to walk through the bamboo trees. So I'm, I'm getting hung up on the actual um, branches. So there are pros and cons to, to, to having that. Um, if I have a lot of bamboo um, trees and I have the colliders on, um, it can actually get kind of hard to navigate. The other thing is having colliders in your scene actually taxes the, the computer a lot because each one of these stocks um, now has sort of processing going along with it. And if I have a lot of those, it really is going to slow down my scene. So you can choose for yourself when to have a collider, when to use the place tree details, and when to sort of drag it onto the scene yourself. When you want to fine tune things and you really want to have a specific detail at a certain spot, I really want to have this one tree at the top of this mountain, it makes more sense to, to drag that tree where you want it. Okay, for this next piece we're going to pop back into the asset store for a couple of reasons. First off, I want you to understand that we have this sort of basic terrain assets package in our project, but there are a lot of other things on the asset store that you can take advantage of. So I'm going to search for trees. And you'll see there are lots of things going on here. Lots of different trees that people have spent a lot of time um, working on and they've made available. You'll notice down here there are 1,204 entries uh, when I search for tree. You'll notice probably that most of them are not free. Uh, people have spent time and they're actually trying to make some money um, on their models. But what I can do is I can search by price. So right now that's search by relevance. Another good one is popularity. So typically with popularity or rating, you're going to find the best assets. But if we're trying to do it on the cheap, 
we're going to search with price. And hopefully, some things are going to pop up that are free. So maybe I find a tree that I really like. I really want to add it to my scene. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to download it. Same thing for rocks. Same things with all kinds of um, things you might want to add to your scene. In fact, if I go over here to the categories and I go into 3D models, things I have characters, environment, props, vegetation. So let's go to vegetation for a second. Once again, all kinds of things going on here. I'm looking by price. So here are some desert plants that are, that are free. Realistic tree pack that's free. So if I were to choose one, cactus pack, which is free. And I've used a lot of these, and they're great. Um, these speed trees are really nice. Um, shantytown trees. I can just go ahead and click on one. Let's do the, um, the cactus pack. I'm going to click on it. I'm just going to download it. I'm going to import it right into my scene, and I could use it just like these other assets. And I say that because the next thing we need to get um, isn't in the standard assets. It's not in the terrain assets. We have to go out and look for what we want. Um, and that's going to be called a skybox. And the skybox, once again, is exactly what it sounds like. We're going to add a sky to our scene, because right now we just sort of have this amorphous blue um, thing going on, which is not very interesting. So once again, I search for skybox. There's 539 entries. I'm going to, to filter by price, and let's see what we can find. This looks nice. It's free. Um, let's, let's try the classic skybox. If I recall, these are pretty good. Uh, it contains 15 skyboxes in different times. So basically, it's the same picture of a sky, but you'll be able to choose the time of day you want to use. So let's go ahead and download that into our scene. We're going to choose to import it. And now Classic Skybox has, has been added to my Assets folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to Window again. And now we're talking about lighting. And the first thing in lighting is Skybox. And right now we're set at this default Skybox. And um, like I said, if we pop back into the scene real fast, pretty boring. So I'm going to go back to Classic Skybox. And I'm going to find one that I think is interesting. And just to sort of add some contrast, let's try one of these sort of um, dusky ones. I'm going to take Skybox 2. I'm going to pull it in here. I'm going to press play. And you'll see it's definitely a little bit more interesting than what we had going on before. If I, didn't, if I instead didn't want to have something that was quite so dark, I could do sort of this brighter one. You see how the scene actually brightens up. Same scene, just sort of different time of day. But it definitely makes the scene look a little bit more realistic. So back in the asset store, there were other ones that were free, that were interesting, and you should take some time and find one that you like. I will mention one more thing about this, and that's is, that is, if I go ahead and I choose again, let's try a really dark one. If you look, the ambient light did get, definitely did get darker. But if I look down at the ground, if I look at sort of the plants and the trees, everything is still kind of on the bright side. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and look at my, my light. In my scene right now, I only have one light. It's called directional light. Um, and it's providing light basically like the sun. If I zoom in on it by pressing F, there it is. It doesn't really matter where directional light is. It's always going to be coming from this angle and the entire scene. So it's sort of mimicking the sun like that. But I think it's too bright. If I look over here, I have several things I can change. I can change the intensity of the light. So for a nighttime scene, I would probably want to turn the light down anyways. Bounce intensity is how much things basically reflect the light. How much does the light bounce off of things? If you turn that up, things have sort of a dreamy quality where light's sort of bouncing off everything, which is really fun to play with. Um, but for our purposes right now, we might want to think about the color of the light. This color is sort of a generic, this is basically the color of sunlight. But in the evening, or in the morning, we might want to have more of a orangey color to it. And you can once again play around with those things. If you're doing some sort of crazy, uh, crazy uh, intergalactic space scene, you might want to have some blue light. 
So these are things will go ahead and make your scene look that much more realistic. At this point, it's up to you to customize your scene as you see fit. I was playing around the asset store and I found this nice little pack of rocks and boulders that was free. Um, they look really nice. I haven't tried putting them in my scene yet, but I think that um, from what I see here in the previews, um, they'd be really nice on one of your islands. I'll also point out that over here in the 3D models category, if you go to props and you filter for price, there's all kinds of things that you can find. Um, I'm going to get rid of the... I had the filter for boulders on, so I'm going to go back here, just go to props, get rid of these filters, and we're still by price. So you see, there's going to be a lot of things here that are free. Um, a ruined car. Um, and if you go, you'll, you'll find more and more and more. Uh, an old well, crates, um, things that might actually make sense on a deserted island. Um, so go ahead and see if you can find anything that makes a lot of sense, um, fit into your scene where it makes the most sense, and it'll only make your scene that much better.